And now for the uh, Europe of Freedom and Democracy group, Mr. Farage, two minutes. Well, Mr. Barroso, I enjoyed your view of the world today, but it was perhaps rather more ironic than you'd intended. You talked about the events in Egypt and elsewhere, saying, isn't it wonderful that people are rising up seeking democracy? I would remind you that democracy is where, a, a method whereby you vote for people who govern you, and then if you don't know what they do, you can get rid of them, turf them out, and put somebody else in. But it was ironic because then your next sentence was, and that is why in Europe, facing the Euro crisis, we must reinforce the community method. Now, for the public watching in on this, which increasingly they do, the community method means that laws are proposed in secret by unelected bureaucrats, people like you. Oh, yes, I know the European Parliament voted for you, but you were the only candidate that was offered to us. Uh, you know, that isn't democracy. So you're saying on the one hand democracy is good, but on the other, in Europe, we can't have it. And that was reinforced. Mr. Verhofstadt, who comes from Belgium, who thinks all nation states should be abolished, well, perhaps his own will be very shortly, is saying we want an economic union. Nobody has voted for it. Nobody has been asked whether they want it. You may vote for it, but the peoples of Europe have not voted for it. Now, what you should be discussing at your summit on Friday is Portugal. Because after the bailouts in Greece and Ireland, it's pretty obvious the markets are sending you all a message. Come in, number three, your time is up. Portuguese bond yields on Monday hit 7.6%. You know that yourself. Uh, it was only at 7%, of course, when it got there that Ireland had to be bailed out. We've also got in April, a massive rollover of Portuguese debt, another 20 billion that has to be rolled over. Remind ourselves, in the last six months, 80% of Portuguese debt was brought up, purchased by the European Central Bank. We cannot go on, as a European Union, buying our own debt. If we do, the next debt crisis won't be a country, but it will be a debt crisis of the European Central Bank itself. Thank you, Mr. Farage. There's a question to you from Martin Schultz. Would you admit that question? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Schultz. Thank you. Herr Schultz, bitte sehr. Madam President, thank you very much. Uh, perhaps you don't know this, but I have a question to you. Because you can't continually uh, talking about um, uh, Belgium as a non-existent state, as you said to Mr. Van Rooy Van and uh, Mr. Verhofstadt here. Do you know on what basis the Belgian state was uh, founded? Yes. I mean, I'm pleased you asked me that. The, the difficulty is when you form an artificial state that has within it more than one language group, which is clearly the case in Belgium, and you then, you, you may for a period of time be able to hold it together, but whether it's Belgium, whether it's Yugoslavia, or whether it's the European Union, if you have entirely different languages and cultures, it will not hold together. And the reason you're so upset about Belgium, and Mr. Van Rompuy um, got terribly upset about it, and Mr. Verhofstadt never likes it, is isn't the truth, isn't the truth, Mr. Schultz, that Belgium is a microcosm for the whole European project? <laughs> Es gibt eine, die, die eine weitere Nachfrage und noch eine Frage von Herrn De Rossa. Auch noch There's a further question and a question by Mr. De Rossa. Ja, das ist, dauert nur 30 Sekunden. Only 30 seconds. I note the representative of a party called United Kingdom Independence Party doesn't know that the Belgian Kingdom was set up on the proposal of the United Kingdom. Thank you very much. So, hat sich, hat sie, ich glaube, es war... Thank you very much. Well, I think, I don't think that was a question really, so I think we can move on to the next blue card question. If you would admit that, Mr. Farage, and then we'll carry on with our speaking, speakers list. Mr. De Rossa, go ahead. Uh, microphone. I hope uh, Mr. Farage is not offended by a question from a citizen of the Irish Republic. Um, could I ask him, what is the basis of the United Kingdom? I understand it consists of the nations of the English, the Scottish, the Welsh and the Northern Irish. Uh, is this not a union of nations? A, a very proud, proud one, I might add. 
So, Herr Farage, bitte sehr. Um, by the way, Mr. Schulz, you're quite right. Belgian was a British invention and a British mistake. We've made many over the years. We've got some things right and some things wrong. Just as your country, just as your country, Germany. Germany's history has not been whiter than white. I think you might agree. You're quite right. I mean, actually, holding together the United Kingdom has been something that's been deeply troubling. And indeed, you know, Ireland went its own way back in, was it 1921, I think, when, when, when independence for Ireland was established. You're right. It is very difficult to hold together different cultures. I do think that the union of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland at the moment works because it has consent. If it didn't have consent, then there'd be popular calls for referendums and those, those, those nations would be able to break away. But my point to you, sir, is that in this European Union, over. nobody is being given that opportunity. Thank you very much.